Uh, Steve, shall we get to talking about questions that people have been asking? Because it's been, well, at least one show since we answered a viewer question, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been one show since three uh, since we did that. Steve, I really wanted to ask you about what, what you thought about Tesco oh. news. It says Tesco has re- recalled its Christmas stuffing mix because it may contain moths. <laughs> so, Steve, but we won't talk about that. We'll go straight to the listener question. Uh, we'll leave that. Uh, we'll leave that for people to decipher. But uh, it was from. Um, it was from Jordan, uh, who messages on, uh, I think it was Spotify that he left his message on. And he said, good luck, so thank you um, to, to me. This was obviously prior to the baby. Uh, I, I needed the luck. Uh, but he said, uh, I would love to know or hear about any investments, chases you plan on opening for your baby. So, Steve, you're ahead of me. On, well, you're not ahead of me, uh, but you, you, you've got a, a year on me or so. Uh, what have you uh, opened up? Uh, in Alistair's name, and I'll come back to a kind of fun point about this in the end, we have two things. We have a junior writer, which is with AJ Bell. Um, I'll come back to that one in a second. And we have a savings account that, I'll be honest, is mostly paid into by his grandparents, who would much rather put their money into a savings account than uh, some sort of stocks and shares type thing. Sorry, his junior writer is a stocks and shares uh, ISA, I should say. Um in the savings account, we've talked about this. It feels like we talked about this quite a lot, quite a long time ago, about how the sort of generation above us, in a lot of cases, are much more anti-investing. And the reasons there might be for that to do with a lack of access to the financial markets. They don't didn't have the kind of platforms that we have now. Lack of information about the stuff, which isn't to say that we're kind of better than they are, just that we have stuff made easier for us in terms of finding out what investing is about and that kind of thing. Uh, as well as some interest rates that were like 11% or something, which, uh, uh, look, it's not crazy to think in the world, I'll I'll take 11% from cash. I don't really care what I can get in the stock market. The stock market appears to be a thing that uh, I only ever read about when it crashes and people lose all their money. Why would I want to do that? I'll happily take my um, double-digit percentage in in cash for the time being. But they much prefer to pay into a savings account um, for Alistair, uh, we prefer to pay into a junior ISA. AJ Bell um, is our preferred, uh, our chosen provider for this stuff. It was the best one I had a look around. What he owns in there at the moment, because we don't make transactions very ob- uh, often because there is a flat rate for them, so we tend to sort of do them once a year, whack the amount for the year in, and then and then let it go uh, for a little bit. So he only actually owns two different things, and both of them are preferred uh, stocks. That's the kind of middle ground we've looked for or at least I've decided we're looking for realistically. This is on me if it goes wrong. Um, That's the kind of middle ground we've looked for between uh, bonds, which at the time were not terribly rewarding and are still not that rewarding, actually, as of today, and something like stocks, uh, which have the capacity to grow. Um, There are, of course, various kind of control and withdrawal issues around a junior ISA, which means that we have to leave it for a long time. So I opted for what I consider to be predictability um over over maybe maximal return um here but uh steve plans on a junior ISA. this seems like it's not one of the highlights of having a uh a kid right you get to manage someone else's money technically it's already open yes yeah, so we've uh there we go we have a, a junior ISA already open for uh for olivia and it's with Hargreaves lansdowne because they've removed all of their fees on their junior ISA, and it's very very uh-huh. cheap um so we're um we're going to just put in uh, a lump sum in April when we get our dividends and um we should uh, it's all going to go into um essentially the uh, Vanguard Global All Cap OEIC and uh the OIC and uh, that's what we're going to do with it so she uh, also has a junior SIP which I'm in the process of opening because uh, Hargreaves Amsterdam will let you open a junior ISA online. But a junior SIP, Steve, you have to fill in a paper form. So uh, I don't have a printer, so I've had to ask my brother to bring me the paper form next time he's passing, uh, which he's going to do for me, and I will fill the paper form in and send it back. Um, The other thing I've opened for her is just a premium bond account, and um, I opened that. So we registered her on the 12th, and I did it the minute I got home, and I haven't heard a single thing from NSNI yet. And uh, um, 
today I just thought I'd ring them up because they've they happily taken the money for the first deposit off me, but they've not actually given me any information whatsoever. And uh, the lady couldn't find the application, but said that sometimes it takes a few days to appear on the system. Uh, so they're a typical um, poorly run, um, uh, inadequate government department, essentially there. So uh, she said if it doesn't appear by Monday on my side to ring them to see if it's appeared on their side, which makes no sense. But it, it was one of those times when you've been on hold for sort of 15 hours and you think, I just want to go now. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've opened, essentially, is a, a junior racer, which I'm, I'm only looking to put in about £10,000 as soon as I can. So I think I'll probably do it over a three-year period. Uh, the same with the junior sick, but I'm going to try and get that up to um, about £10,000. And then I'm just going to let that do its business um, from that point onwards, it's not something I would want to regularly contribute to. And the premium bonds, I figure I will just put in. Uh, well, essentially, every time we get coins, uh, we've been saving coins uh, because there is a mystery bridge in Lincolnshire, Steve, that uh, moves quite regularly. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where it is, but every so often I drive up to it. And it costs, like, I think it's 20p or 30p to go over. So I always need some cash because they don't, they don't take card. But... Mm. Um, Whenever I've got excess coins, uh, I'm banging them in a, in a pig, which I will eventually uh, cash out and use to uh, add to her premium bond account and things like that as well. So um, I've sort of got it in my head. I've got my cash back from my Chase account as well. Whenever I get cash back for spending on Chase, that's also going to go into a, a premium bonds as well. So I, I feel like she's going to be a bazillionaire by the time uh, she gets to 18. Um, but we'll uh, we'll uh, that that also could be the price of a loaf of bread if inflation keeps going. So we'll see. Well, yeah, you need to make plans for your care when you get older. Um, and it's uh, going to land on whoever, well, her and anyone else that you might choose to uh, bring into the world. Tell me a bit more about the idea behind the premium bonds thing. I mean, I get the case for the SIP, and I get the ISA, and I get that there's a a difference between them. Just in case anyone's interested, junior ISA money belongs to the child which is an obvious sounding point but it's significant um they can take control of their account at 16 and can withdraw from it at 80 uh as i understand it so at 16 alistair can say i'll oh, sod this why do i own a load of lloyd's preferreds i'm banging it all in realty income or, or whatever he wants to do with it he can't then take anything out till he reaches 18 uh though um a sip works like a pretty much like a sip well, how's a junior sip different from a sip steve same sort of idea, Steve. Really, because mm. you can't withdraw from a a sip until you're in your is it 50, late fifties, and it'll it'll be no well, different. For, by the time out to get up there, it's going to be about three hundred uh, with retirement exactly, age yeah. and stuff. But yeah, yeah, bionic hearts and bionic legs and things like that. So uh, yeah, they'll be living for till five hundred. But uh, that's generally the idea is just basically to get as much money in that as soon. I think it's got a quite low limit. I think you can only put about two and mm-hmm. I think it's two thousand eight hundred quid or something like that in. When you put the uh, government claw back on it, the twenty percent claw back, it comes up to a more reasonable, straightforward number. I think it's two eight eighty, maybe, um, uh, and then it, it ends up being a, a more reasonable number. But I'm going to basically try and get ten grand into that as soon as I can, and then obviously there's fifty, fifty five, probably years of compounding from that point onwards till mm-hmm. uh, maybe even sixty five years of compounding before she'll be able to retire with that. So. The idea being that she can go and do whatever she wants uh, and doesn't have to go and get a high-paid, high-stress job uh, in order to secure a pension. She can go and, you know, do something that's a bit more fulfilling. Just find a way to break even each month, right? Um, mm. and, and when you get to the end of uh, your kind of working life, at whatever point that might be... Buy a lumber. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I was going to say things will be kind of looked after and so on. But yes, buy a Lambo uh, is... It's something you can do. Buy a Lambo and drive it around Hull. Are there many of those kicking around there? I I mean, we have a Porsche dealership, but um, I don't think I've ever seen it. I, no, maybe one or two. When when Hull City were in the Premiership, there was a couple knocking about, uh, but I haven't seen any for not, not, not where Hull currently are in the Championship. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the premium bonds thing um, as an emergency fund? Um, it's not an emergency fund. It's just somewhere to stash some cash for the meantime. Um, I think... Mm-hmm. Um, bit young to have a bank account essentially so uh what we'll, we'll be bothering with that until until you know any concept of money arrives and then i've been recommended rooster money i don't know if you've come across that steve by natwest it's basically um um uh, wow 
I can't remember what the account was called. Go Henry. It's basically like Go Henry, a version of Go Henry that's uh, seller taped onto your Nat, your NatWest account so you can monitor what they're mm-hmm. doing and what they're spending. But they get their own little card with an allowance on it and you can, you know, like set them tasks to like go and get all the logs from the log store and things like that and you give them five pounds when they complete it and, you know, clean the pots and what have you. So um yeah, it's um it's just a way to reward slave labour. <laughs> Mm. Can I get all the logs from the log store? Uh, Alistair's first question would be, well, we don't have a log store. But yeah. I'm dreaming um, <laughs> I'm dreaming up all the tasks I hate. It's like, right, log store. <laughs> Mop floor. Yeah, this is good. Uh, and then you can um, take it all back again as national insurance and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Learn about tax. Yep, learn about tax. This is good. This connects to a question that we will come to in a future week about how to teach them about... Uh, money i wonder if this might be useful for that i'm going to go and look into it in a bit but we are 